For those among you seeking a deeper sense of peace and a greater sense of connectedness in your daily life, you can forgive yourself for falling short in today's environment. In the history of mankind, never has there been a more high-paced and frenetic time. We are a civilization inebriated with ceaseless stimuli and non-stop action. Finding no haven in the midst of this madness, we search outside ourselves for an antidote to our spirit's anguish. Accordingly, we suffer from epidemics of obesity, chronic fatigue, substance abuse, and stress-based neuroses. We are, as my mother would say, driven to distraction. Yet there is no lack of access to the deep teachings of our meditative and spiritual traditions, pointing us towards a more mindful and constructive life. And the self-development community has in its toolbox marvelously effective strategies for drawing one out of habitual patterns of self-obsession and negativity. As a teacher in this community, I've noted that many participants are like people who finally achieve their goal of learning to drive and a year later are searching for a more effective driving tradition. When do we actually get to put the rubber on the road? Why do so many of us fail? Why do so many reread the same information, chant the same aphorisms, attend the same workshops, and yet fundamentally remain as uptight and distracted as ever? The missing element is our ability to settle fully into the moment through the unfiltered experience of our body. To first of all, recognize when we have left the here and now and embarked on a journey of imagination and speculation. To develop this discipline of deepened somatic awareness, that is, the simple yet profound settling into one's skin, is the heart of this DVD's message and the proven method that I offer to you. You'll find that this work is divided into two parts. The first being specific exercises to help awaken the body and the second section showing vivid real-life examples where we can apply this deepened somatic awareness. As we enter into this work, let's first draw our attention to a couple of ever-present allies in our quest for a more conscious embodiment of our spirit's yearning. These allies are breath and gravity. Our breath is like a divine metronome inviting us to inspire ourselves with every inhalation and with every outbreath to purge that which no longer serves us. An awareness of our spine's relationship with gravity is the cornerstone of this work. Through proper alignment, we increase vitality, calm the mind, and find the key to greater personal power. Okay, let's get down to work. We'll start with an exercise routine that I've developed to support my processes in the workshops. You'll need to put aside about 20 minutes of your time, wear comfortable clothing, and have a slightly padded surface to work on. Okay, let's do it. Our first exercise, the rolling spinal flexion, will help us warm up the body and open up the spaces between the vertebrae. It is important with this, as with every exercise, that we precisely match our breathing with our movements. From this seated position, exhale to prepare, and now inhaling, roll smoothly back onto the shoulder blades, eyes to the thighs, careful not to hit the back of your head. Now exhaling, Extend the legs to the ceiling. Tuck one heel after the other to your backside. Squeeze your elbows together and cascade your spine forward, chin finally to the chest. Rolling back, we want a sense of pushing our heels to the ceiling to lengthen the back of the legs and to engage our core muscles. Flexing forward, strive to push the crown of the head up and then down, releasing any excess tension around the eyes and jaws. Our movements here should be smooth and natural, like the ebbing and flowing of the tides. Inhale back, gathering a quick, full breath deep into the rib cage, and exhaling, contract your hara inward and extend this exhalation right through to the very end of the movement as we push our elbows inward, 
and widen the space between our shoulder blades. This rolling flexion is a gentle and effective way to warm up the body. Try 10 to 12 repetitions to begin with, and with your last repetition, place your feet flat on the mat, gently hug your knees, and release your head and neck forward, closing the eyes to focus on the breath. As you inhale, have a sense of widening the back, opening up the spaces between the ribs, and exhaling, push the breath out a bit more than is habitual. Check the area around your upper back, neck, and jaw for excess tension. Use this conscious outbreath like a broom to sweep away those tensions that are not presently serving your body's needs. Again, with the in-breath, pull the air down towards your kidneys, widening the back like a bellows, the air rushing in to nourish your system, and exhaling, consciously purge your system of that which no longer serves you. This next exercise I call the rolling jackknife and it will help you learn to strengthen those core muscles that protect your lower back. Start by extending your legs, toes pointed at the junction of the wall and ceiling in front of you. Again, initiating with the in-breath, roll back onto the shoulder blades without touching the head to the ground, keeping your eyes to the thighs. Exhaling, roll forward high onto your sits bones, vigorously drawing your navel inward to corset your lower back. To prevent your shoulders from rounding forward, keep the palms of your hands just off the ground, fingers extended. Again, inhale briskly as you roll back, chin rolled forward, and exhaling, return to this balance point, as still and stable as you can manage. This will be challenging for many of you to begin with. Should you find that there is any pain in your lower back, Try the same movement, but with your knees bent, the toes still pointed, and again, roll back smoothly to the shoulder blades, and exhale, returning to the stable balance point, hands just off the ground. If you're new to this type of core conditioning, then 10 repetitions should be plenty to start with. If you're doing this with bent knees, try extending the legs more fully before increasing your reps. And again, we'll recharge our system with this restorative breath. Ensure that your jaw is soft and your eyes half-lidded or closed. Pull the breath deeply into the back, widening the spaces between the ribs, and push the out-breath a little longer than you would normally. As we get into more vigorous exercises, this practice of recharging your body with the breath will give you more endurance than you thought possible. This next exercise I call the oblique crossover, named after the oblique abdominals, those core muscles responsible for stability and torsional power. Place your fingertips lightly on the back of your head, elbows pulled back wide, float the feet and point the toes. With the in-breath, hinge halfway back. Now, exhaling, rotate your torso and draw one elbow towards the opposite knee. Alternating sides, we inhale back and sucking the gut in, we rotate the barrel of our rib cage at right angles to the center line of our body. Even though the elbow and knee may touch, it is more useful to think of rotating the chest such that you aim your heart towards the ground beside you. Again, inhale halfway back, and now push the out breath vigorously as you rotate chest and chin to the opposite side. Strive to keep the fingertips lightly placed on your head so that you don't pull your neck with your arms. Elbows stay wide and the focus remains on strong rotation of the rib cage. Now, your low back extensors are going to be singing after 10 or 12 repetitions. So here's a great stretch to recharge and lengthen that vitally important muscle group. Roll gently down onto the mat, close the eyes and pull one knee towards the chest. Inhale deeply, and with the out-breath, pay attention to the line of force that is releasing along the underside of your buttocks and in those hard-working lumbar extensors. With the second breath, draw the knee a little closer still, and imagine any residual tension softening and melting away with your deliberate exhalation. Now from here, place the opposite hand on the upper knee 
and inhaling to prepare, we now exhale and rotate that knee towards the mat while turning the head gently in the opposite direction. This creates a soft spiral shape in the spine and gives a wonderful release to the low back as well as stretching the connective tissue around the pelvis. If you find no challenge in this position, you can extend your shin also at right angles to the body to intensify the stretch. With your in-breath, imagine widening the spaces between the ribs, especially on the side open to the ceiling. As you exhale, lengthen and soften this band of muscle that stretches across the side of your butt cheek. Take five or six deep breaths. With each cycle, do an internal survey, checking to see if there is any excess tightness that can be released with the out-breath. After completing the first side, we now gently return to our backs, sending that first leg long on the mat, and commencing the sequence once again by pulling the second knee gently to our chest. As always with these restorative stretches, let your breath be the measure of the pace of your stretch. If the breath catches due to sharp pain, it is your body's way of telling you to go slower and listen to the subtle guidance coming from within. Having completed five or six deep breaths per side, we now return squarely to our backs palms down by our hips, feet flat on the mat, fairly close to the butt, and our knees and ankles touching. Draw your belly inward, and now let your knees and hips rock side to side like windshield wipers. If you pay attention and keep a mild core contraction, you can feel the rotation of the vertebrae from the sacrum right up the length of the spine into the base of the neck. This exercise, along with the previous hip and back stretch is a treat for the spine after vigorous core conditioning and it is a wonderful end of the day stretch or at any time when you feel tension accumulating in your low back. Having worked on our core muscles and spinal flexion, we now transition to our bellies and working face down on the mats, we're going to strengthen our mid back and develop what I call scapular stabilization. This is the very important task of retraining our shoulder blades to stay in their pockets, drawn down and inwards towards that area of the spine just behind our heart. As with our previous exercises, we're going to coordinate our movements with our breath, using our exhalation to power the more vigorous component of each movement. Now, this exercise calls for mid-back extension, and there's a tendency to rotate your chin upward, so. And while the body is certainly capable of this range of motion, for our purposes here, we're going to avoid the strain on the neck and keep our eyes to the mat and the crown of our head projected forward. Inhale to prepare, and now exhaling, feel your fingertips drawn towards your feet as you hinge here in mid-spine. Inhale back to the mat smoothly, and again exhale in the mind's eye projecting a line from mid-back through the crown of your head towards the wall in front of you. Imagine that you're squeezing a tennis ball inward with your shoulder blades. And again, inhale, ease down, and exhale, squeeze your thumbs together over your tailbone. This is one of the best exercises I know for re-establishing an erect posture and opening the area around the heart. Most important here, again, is to hinge in mid-back powering your contraction down the spine and in sync with your exhalation. After 8 or 10 reps, let's recharge by settling back into what is known as a shell stretch. Settle your butt back between your heels, your knees wide enough so that your rib cage can nestle in between the thighs. Keeping your backside in contact with your heels, reach your fingertips as far forward as you can, creating a sense of traction along your spine. This is a great position to experience that cleansing breath we looked at earlier, sometimes called an intercostal breath. It teaches us to draw our inhalation to the lower lobes of the lungs, where the exchange of blood gases is more efficient. This is also an effective posture for releasing the inevitable tension cultivated in the previous exercise. Again, we want to widen the spaces between the ribs as we inhale and exhaling, sweep away any tension that no longer serves us. 
Check for tension in the jaw, neck, and shoulders, areas that tend to be unconscious reservoirs of chronic tension. After five or six full breaths, let's move again to our bellies for a second back strengthening exercise. This time we'll extend our arms forward and set our feet a bit wider than the hips. Inhaling to prepare, we now exhale and lift simultaneously both the elbows and knees, fingers and toes strongly reaching outward. Inhale, ease down and exhale, pulse upward. Remember to keep your eyes downward and the crown of the head forward. You can imagine that your torso is like a fire hydrant and your arms and legs like hoses. As you exhale, you open the valves and the water pressure fills your limbs, elevating them off the mat with ease. The pace for this one is a bit more brisk. Inhale, ease down. Exhale, squeeze up. This is a powerful exercise for strengthening all your spinal extensors. Those muscles vitally important in maintaining a proud and pain-free posture. The hinge point for this movement is in your lumbar area and your extensors here will likely have had enough after 10 or 12 repetitions. So again, we'll settle back into our shell stretch to recharge and lengthen this hard-working muscle group. Remember, as before, keep your hips back as the fingers reach forward, ribs nestling between your open thighs. Widen your back with the in-breath and exhaling. Push your breath out a bit more than is habitual and cleanse your system of any unneeded tension. Inhale, nourish the blood with a brisk, deep breath. Exhale, release that which no longer serves you. We now come to our leg work and an exercise I call Sankyo Squats, an exercise common in traditional Japanese martial arts. We'll start with our feet in what a ballet person would call first position, heels almost touching, and the insteps at close to a right angle. Grab one wrist behind your tailbone and draw your shoulder blades down and back. With the in-breath, lower your butt to your heels, keeping your knees aligned with the center of your feet. Now, exhaling, draw the belly inward and push the crown of your head towards the ceiling. Again, inhale down and exhaling, drive the straight back upwards as though rubbing your back against a tree. At the top of your squat, push your joined hands further down the backside to open the chest and encourage perfect alignment. For various reasons, some of you may not be able to go all the way down to the heels, and that's okay. If this is the case, ensure alignment before range of motion. That is, under no circumstances should you give up the straight vertical line in your spine just to squat deeper, for this will exacerbate our habitual tendency to underuse our legs and overuse our lumbar extensors. Again, we inhale down and exhale, drive upward with the crown of the head. I've had you do spinal extension work before these squats. This is deliberately done so that you can use that foundation to aid you in retraining the body to recruit the legs through their full range of motion without sacrificing your posture. We'll go for a higher number of reps with our leg work. Try for 20 or so to begin with, and we'll recharge our system with a movement I call the spine unwind. Bring your feet now side by side, knees touching. Inhale to prepare, and exhale, dive to the floor, eyes to the ankles and the crown of the head aimed to the mat. Release any tension in the neck and jaw, head hanging freely with the knees slightly bent and the ribs touching your thighs. Now, inhale to prepare, and exhale, drive the joined knees forward and unfurl yourself in one smooth cascade of motion. Knees, thighs, belly, chest, and finally the chin comes level and the shoulder blades drop down into their pockets. Stand tall, and again, inhale, into the wide chest, filling your back, and again, exhale, dive forward, releasing all the tension in your upper torso, neck, and jaw. Gather your strength with the in-breath, and once again, express your power from the bottom up like a breaking wave 
smoothly expanding to a tall, full posture. Do four or five of these spine unwinds and stand still for a moment and notice the difference you feel in the sense of groundedness and vitality you feel through the length of your spine. From the squats, we now transition to lunges, which I would consider one of my desert island exercises. So important are they for developing core stability, leg strength, and balance. We'll start by establishing a nice wide stance, about double the length of a normal stride. You want a good strong purchase on the mats. Your toes pointed straight ahead. You'll also need to ensure that you have some lateral distance between the feet. That is, don't have them in one straight line or you'll lack the necessary stability to pull this exercise off without falling to one side or the other. Again, widen your stance with a sense, if you will, of spreading the mats. Now, grabbing one wrist at the base of your spine. With the in-breath, we're going to drop the rear knee to lightly touch the mat beneath us and exhaling as always, we pull the belly inward and push the crown of the head directly to the ceiling above us. Inhale down and again, exhale, drive the shoulder blades in the mind's eye, perhaps five degrees backwards from the vertical line. When you think of going straight up, I find that you'll always tend to tilt a little bit forward. So again, as you exhale and squeeze upward, push the shoulder blades slightly back from the center line and this will serve to keep your posture dead straight and this is what we're going for in this case. As with the squats, don't sacrifice your form for range of motion. That is, if you're not able to go all the way down with your knee to the mat, rather keep the spine straight and go as deeply as you can manage. Let's strive for a minimum of 12 repetitions per side. After having finished your first side, let's immediately transition to the second side and re-establish that strong, wide purchase on the mat. As before, we're going to inhale down, pull the belly in, and exhale that straight spinal line directly at the ceiling. Now many of us are going to find strong stimulation coming from our legs here. Don't believe what they're saying. They actually enjoy this work. Having finished this set, we're now going to transition once again to recharge our body by doing the spine unwind. So let's draw our feet side by side, kneecaps touching. We inhale to prepare and exhale, dive forward, head pendant, crown of the head towards the floor in front of us. We inhale at the bottom, exhale grabbing the mats with our toes and now we drive the joint knees forward and cascade the spine upwards in one smooth unfurling action. Do two or three of these and again feel that sense of revitalizing the spine. This next exercise I call the oblique lunge and like the basic lunge we've just done it serves to strengthen our legs, but these oblique lunges also build mobility around the hips and improve our overall sense of stability and balance. So once again, let's establish a nice wide stance. The difference this time is that we'll keep our feet in line directly underneath our bodies and we'll open our stance by rotating our legs and insteps outward. Inhaling to prepare, we now exhale, contract inward at the core, and rotate our hips and ribs, reaching one hand to the outside of the opposite knee. Inhale in transition, and now counter-rotate and exhale the other hand to its opposite knee. The feeling in the arms is very much like swimming, so place your thumb downward here, just outside the kneecap. Our focus with this is unity of movement, so let the hips and ribs turn as one, and let the chest and chin rotate together, pointing to the floor, first on one side and then the other. As with our earlier torsional exercise, the oblique crossovers, we want to find that feeling of rotating the barrel of our rib cage, leading the movement with the heart rather than the chin. These oblique lunges offer a great dynamic stretch for this band of muscles on the outside of the butt here. Some of you may find yourself very wobbly to begin with. If that's the case, firstly, 
Make sure that your feet rotate well outward, keeping the kneecap aligned with the big toe. Also in your mind's eye, imagine your center of gravity is located somewhere about knee level. This will help to draw unnecessary and destabilizing tension from your upper torso. After a dozen or so of the oblique lunges, let's now move to a simple and delightful exercise I call twirls. Standing erect with your feet together, bend the knees slightly and contract your belly gently inward. Holding this core contraction and straight spine, now begin to rotate the hips and ribs side to side, the shoulders and arms soft, the chest and chin moving as one unit. Keep the jaw relaxed, the eyes half-lidded, and turn freely, loosely, side to side, side to side. In a truly functional body, the upper is subservient to the lower, so let any appropriate tension gather in your feet, your core, and along the length of the spine. Other than that, relax, and give yourself over to this gentle rotation, side to side, the arms moving as though they were holding buckets of water. You may remember doing this as a child. Many children instinctively use twirling to relax and energize their bodies. After a couple dozen twirls, straighten your knees, keep your posture tall, and now sweep your arms to the ceiling, inhaling deep into the back, and as you put the hands downward, have a sense of compressing the breath. With the out-breath, push the palms forward, exhaling a bit more powerfully than normal. I call this the inspiration breath. It's a reminder for us that every conscious in-breath is a divine gift, a chance to literally inspire ourselves. And, exhaling, we meet the world with a spirit of gratitude, purging our system of that which no longer serves us. Again, inhale the hands upward, compress the breath briefly into the contracted core, and exhale out the palms, the spine tall, the feet solid on the earth. One more time, nourish your system, and now push the out-breath a little longer than the previous ones, bringing the palms together over the heart, a position known as gasho in the Zen tradition. With the feet solidly gripping the earth and the crown of the head pushing towards the ceiling, your spine becomes an antenna to the heavens. Simply settle into the stillness of the moment, the eyes half-lidded or closed, and for three or four breaths, hold your body as a living prayer, a vessel for God's Spirit. The exercises that you've just seen are not a comprehensive fitness regime, but rather serve as a foundation to forge your body as a vessel for the spirit's yearning. As you begin to retrain your muscular skeletal system to more effectively align with gravity, you'll soon begin to notice your tendency to slouch, your poor lifting habits, and the diminished image that you project through a contracted walking posture. One of the greatest gifts that a conscious approach to exercise offers is the deepened sense of mindfulness that naturally arises when we pay attention to the feedback of those muscle groups awakened and stimulated by recent exercise. For so many of us, our exercise regime is a mechanical process, something we endure like bitter medicine. This no pain, no gain approach to fitness may for a while give you a pleasing body shape, but it does nothing to cultivate our appreciation of the gifts that surround and contain us. Just as an athlete daily trains to better his skills, so we must give ourselves to the continual improvement in quality of our performance of daily tasks. I call this approach the Olympics of life, and it's a little game I play with myself to encourage quality in every task before me. I imagine that there's a panel of judges grading me on my performance in the seemingly mundane tasks that make up much of our day. These imaginary judges score me on the fullness of my breath, the quality of my core contraction, and the sense of care I impart to the completion of the job as I transition to the next event. It is the decathlon of life. As you develop this habit of meeting the world through your five senses, 
you'll often catch yourself leaving the here and now, falling prey to anxiety and anxiety's inevitable companions, tension in the upper torso and jaw, contraction of posture, and shallowness of breath. Noting these moments without indulging in self-criticism is an essential step to deeper self-awareness. For the heart of any meditative discipline is in returning to the here and now. One effective method of sinking back into the moment is to first of all take a deep breath, pushing the out breath longer than is normal. If you're in motion, give specific attention to your core muscles and the quality of contact your feet have with the earth. If seated, roll your pelvis forward to flatten the lower back and push the crown of your head towards the ceiling. This creates a dynamic tension along the length of your spine whilst opening the chest to a fuller, more calming breath. And we can do so much for our mindfulness training by applying heavy lifting protocols to our every movement. Most of us who have grown up in developed countries have never established the habit of deep squatting. Yet when we fail to use the largest and strongest muscles in our body as they were designed, we inevitably overuse our relatively tiny lumbar extensors. It's no wonder that low back strain is the most common orthopedic injury in our society. No matter the weight of your load, treat it as though it were dangerously heavy. Drop your center of gravity to the object, contract your core inward and exhale upward. Ensure that you keep your shoulders down and back and especially keep your load within the frame of your hips as you turn. This type of vigilance and movement is one of the greatest gifts to be drawn from martial arts practice. On the mats, lapses in attention can quickly result in serious injury. And so, over time, the martial arts adept develops an endurance of concentration that reveals and reinforces her spirit's innate yearning to live fully in the moment. It's logical then that the samurai embraced Zen meditation. The physical settling of tension that results from sincere Zen practice is arguably a warrior's greatest asset in combat. The samurai use the term tanren to describe both the forging of a sword as well as one's lifelong commitment to the daily practice of those techniques that unite and purify body, mind and spirit. Now clearly, not everyone will embrace martial arts as a lifelong practice. The key here is to cultivate a warrior's resolve and awareness in whatever form your training takes. A notable fringe benefit of expanded awareness and erect posture is that you are much less likely to suffer assault when you habitually carry yourself this way. For the two-legged predators in our midst are looking for the easy targets, those who appear dull in their awareness and slack in their posture. For this and so many other reasons, our approach to exercise must interpenetrate our practice of mindfulness in every task before us. To help anchor this practice, let's re-examine a couple key techniques with regards to your breath and awareness of gravity. Firstly, anxious tension tends to rise in the body, causing us to become literally uptight. When you notice this unnecessary tension around the jaw, the shoulders, the chest, etc., take a full breath with a sense of widening your back. Pull the air down your spine and toward your kidneys. Grab the earth with your toes, even if they're inside shoes. Expand your awareness around your hara. Notice the ebb and swell of your belly with the rhythms of your breathing. This conscious appreciation of the breath is the gateway to living richly in the moment.
Secondly, with regards to posture, our primary task here is to catch ourselves when we have lost our ideal line in the spine. When the pelvis tilts back, typically the shoulders will round forward and we can sense a certain closing off around the heart. When you catch yourself so, reestablish your spine by rotating the hip crest forward. Draw the shoulder blades down the back and push the crown of your head towards heaven. Carrying yourself so, you not only look good, but you stimulate the body's innate life force and connection to Mother Earth. As we delve further into this practice of somatic awareness, it is essential to keep about your inquiry a bright and curious spirit. This spirit is called Shoshin in Japanese culture, often translated as beginner's mind. This beginner's mind has with it a necessary vulnerability, a forthright stepping into mystery and ignorance. It is entering the banquet hall of life with your cup and plate empty. Such an approach demands a courage of conviction and a discipline of attention. That is why I encourage all of you to cultivate some form of daily meditative practice. It's like cardio training for your awareness. This form of mindfulness training may take the form of seated meditation, and I highly recommend that you learn the basics of this practice if you've not been taught. But the personal trainer in me wishes for you that you find the form of training that you are actually likely to do. And for some of us, we just won't sit still on our tush for any length of time. If you are one of those folks, then rather than beating yourself up for not being the meditative type, find a form of training that allows you to move while giving fierce attention to your process. It might be Tai Chi, pottery, archery, painting, or any process to which you give a spirit of organized inquiry. The key is to consciously step into a distinct time and place wherein you say to yourself, now I am training. Finding a teacher and a tradition that speaks to you can save you much unnecessary effort. I tell my students with regards to this path that they must set themselves for a marathon rather than a sprint. But my friends, what a rich race it can be for us. As we more regularly enter each moment through our five senses, so we are gifted with a spine that is an antenna to the heavens and lungs that share God's breath. Be kind to yourself, yet be firm too. At times you'll notice yourself doing all sorts of shucking and jiving to avoid the task of your training, the task of pouring your entire spirit into the appreciation of the body's experience. At such times I often imagine that it is my vocation, my paid profession, to return to this somatic awareness with every noticed breath. And Lord knows we've all hauled our sorry ass out of bed and off to work when we were less than completely motivated. So keep at it. If you lose your way, it's okay to ask for directions. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. The practices contained on this DVD have so enriched my life. It is my sincere wish that they will be of some help for you as well. Good luck. God bless.